how are you going to reconcile the uh, going in the wrong direction with the uh, ship of lights having uh, having basically given them the coordinates to Earth? Um, the, actually, that was going to also bring. Uh, there was going to be a continuation with the ship of lights, and actually with Jane's character coming back into the mix. Um, and you actually, we actually find out that there's a larger battle going on, and that sometimes the, um, angelic beings are not what they appear to be. There can be some other forces disguised as angelic beings. Oh, my heart's breaking as I'm hearing this. Um, again, that was, um, you know, and, and eventually where, you know, the series was going to go was it was going to be a, a symbolic thing, which was about the larger battle between the Ibli type forces and um, the lightship forces. And it's the humans and the Cylons all talking in terms of free will and and um, and choice and then those things which either make us human or not human um, and that was the journey again thematically we're going to step into so that was going to basically uh, comprise the, the main plot elements of, of at least the first season yeah that was going to be um, plot elements uh, again that we're going to go through the series um, but Jane's character we were going to reintroduce um, or at least it was, a, it was an idea that I had uh, to be the one to sort of um, turn Richard's character, to turn Apollo back from his programming, from the dark side, from giving up that which made him human. Um, it was his rebirth, his sort of ability to have a second chance. Um, and I think that would have been, whether you were a fan of the uh, original show, you would have gotten something completely on another level out of it, but if you were just stepping into it, you would have come to care about the characters unto themselves and realize that, um, you know, love conquers all, as it were. Well, it sounds like we would have probably seen fewer uh, traditional space battles. It, it sounds like there would have been more communication b- between the Cylons and, and the Colonials than just sh- a shoot 'em up every week. Um, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I think we, there was going to be definitely, you know, shoot em, shoot em ups each week, but it was going to be also saying something more about the human condition and talking more in terms of, um, you know, deeper issues that, uh, again, thematically the original show had tapped into. Um, and those were the strongest episodes of the original show, was when they talked about uh, the more spiritual sides and the more mythic sides of, of storytelling. Oh. And the values of hope and family and courage above adversity. Absolutely. And, and you know, that was, you know, and one of the, the great storylines we had was actually, you know, um, Boxy or Oren was uh, going to become obsessed with getting his father back, even at the point where he was willing to, um, he, he was starting to uh, put the, the fleet in danger uh, because he was obsessed with, you know, regaining this thing which he had lost 20 years earlier. And do you feel that there's uh, that there is a place for that with the 21st century audience? I mean, I, I know that's something I'd like to see, but but overall, do you do you, do you know? I I absolutely I absolutely think with the 21st century audience, there is, um, you know, when you look at the success, uh, I mean, and I'm talking about the big successes of Hollywood. Um, it is the more pop culture, the more you know, inclusive uh, science fiction like Star Wars, like Harry Potter, um, you know, like Spider-Man, which, again, is not only about what's cool to the, you know, to the 18-year-old or the 38-year-old, but what's what's cool on a level when you're 8 or 18 or 38 or 88 um, and not trying just to target. And look, I'm 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 a science fiction fan, but... The show we were going to be doing was not only for science fiction fans, but for people who were not science fiction fans and who just like good good stories. Well, let's talk a little bit about the look and feel of the show. There's and there's a lot of folks out there who can't seem to grasp the concept that a continuation would have meant updating. I mean, the original show still gets a lot of what I see as unfair criticism for feathered hair, disco, capes and boots, and you know, to me, that's like criticizing "I Love Lucy" for being shot in black and white. What, yeah. what steps had you taken with your show to meet the challenge of bringing the look and feel of Battlestar Galactica into the 21st century while uh, maintaining a link to the original? Uh, again, it was, it was staying true to a lot of the wonderful uh, production design, staying true to the actors, staying true to the spirit of 
you know, what Boomer was or what Apollo was or, you know, the memory of Adama. Uh, and keeping true to the ship, you know, the Galactica we had, um, the only modification, and it was only one that I had requested, um, was to put big guns on it. You know, the, that was the one thing which, looking back, I'm like, the Galactica should have some big old, you know, star blazer <laughs> type guns on it so that it could hold its own instead of those little rail guns which went back and forth along the launch base. Oh. Um, but it was it was a ship that was 25 years older and hadn't, other than having some big guns put on it, had not seen a lot of uh, love and care in about 20 years. So it was starting to rust out and mothball a bit. Um, and also the, the, the use of the... Um, you know, the, one of the things that I really loved about the show, um, which I know has been derided as of late, was the whole Chariots of the Gods tie-in, um, which was, you know, there are those who believe, you know, um, that life here started out there. And it was tying in and, you know, pulling in information, and we had a massive um, style guide, which, again, took Egyptian and Aztec and Mayan and um, Babylonian and Sumerian and Chinese and all of these great... Uh, historic cultures and melded them into one. Um, so there would be hints at that and still keeping the, the Egyptian, uh, you know, motif on the, um, on the, the Viper uh, helmets and, and, and the uniforms. And, you know, as far as capes go, um, there probably would have been capes and formal. Like it would have been like a dress uniform thing. Uh, but as far as, you know, everyday cape use, um, that was something that would have probably gone uh, a little bit to the side. Um, but again, still trained, staying true to the to the colors they had, and using those icons of the of the the dark blues and and the browns and the tans and the and you know because it worked so well, and there was a reason that it worked so well. Well, we saw the uh, global effects designs uh, for the the new Cylon Centurions, and uh, they, they looked uh, phenomenal. And it still brings a tear to my eye. Uh, obviously, uh, on on the Sci Fi Channel series now, we see a lot more human Cylons than mechanical Cylons. Would that have been yeah. the case on your show? And would that have been uh, an, an economic thing? Yeah, no, I, I think we were actually building the suits. Um, they're all CG, um, so that was the difference that we were going to do, and. Um, and in the budget we had, um, you know, we had a, a good chunk of change set aside to build enough of those Cylon suits. Um, and one of the, 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 the real great ideas that Brian had was to, you know, and we all agreed we wanted to bring the, the Cylons back as, as robots, um, and not reveal that. And the only reveal we had that there were human Cylons was in the last shot of our original, um, pilot, um, which was you hear this voice sort of giving orders to the mechanical Cylons throughout the pilot. And then um, in the last shot, you're hearing this voice again, and we go in through, the, through space, through the mist, and we, for the first time we actually see the planet uh, Cylon. And we go in, and this voice is getting louder and clearer, and you, you zoom in, and then you see, oh, my God, these are not robots giving these orders. These are humans. And you come across this table in the shadows, and you see these faces, 